Hi there, and welcome to Talk Stocks Deal Flow. Uh, today, we're going to talk food CPG deals. That's consumer packaged goods. So I'm your host, Kier Reynolds. I've been active in the small cap investment sector since 2005. And uh, what I like to do with these segments is uh, explain a little bit about the sector and then give you an idea that you can go research on your own. So why don't we get the disclaimer out of the way before we jump right in? This is not investment advice. This is for information purposes only. This is not a solicitation to buy or sell securities. Blender Bytes Limited, which is one of the companies we're going to talk about today, didn't consult or review this information in any way. And I have probably made some errors in this presentation. So please do your own due diligence. And it's thank you. Why don't we jump right in now? So we're going to be talking today about a segment of this consumer packaged goods called the Better For You or the BFY sector. This has really been a hot mess for like the last six months for a couple of reasons. Uh, number, number one, we're in a high inflationary environment. What's going on over with Ukraine and Russia and the geopolitical situation, also with some, some droughts that are affecting uh, crop yields and things like that. Um, you know, uh, there's some concern about the cost of, of, of the real cost of foods going up. Two, a lot of these companies promised the world. Uh, they thought that everybody was going to drop beef and go buy, go and um, eat uh, uh, plant based burgers. Um, it hasn't really happened necessarily with the amount of volume or this or the total market that everybody predicted. Um, but because of this disaster that we've got and it being a horrible train wreck, um, um, we think that there's a lot of opportunity. So uh, one, we're just going to walk you through a couple here that uh, of, of some of the problems. So we've got the very good food company, April 1st, not April, not an April Fool's joke. They came out with their annual uh, financials and uh, they lost like 54, or $55 million, um, huge loss. And as a result, April 4th, four days later, the two founders been with the company for five and a half years um, where uh, one of them was terminated, the other one resigned. So total clown show. Anyways, what else do we have here? Oatly, which is a, a, a non-dairy um, a based milk. Um, uh, it's oat, oat milk, uh, probably the most well-known brand. It was a real darling when it first got going there last year. Anyways, the thing's down 82% over the last 12 months. If you look at Beyond Meat, everybody knows Beyond Meat, plant-based burgers, probably the best known brand. Because it was the best known brand and it was a real market darling when it listed, it meant that everybody wanted to come up with their own plant-based burger. They thought it was a, an easy place to, to make a quick buck. As a result, Beyond Meat has been struggling to maintain its market share and it's been having to face a, a price, price uh, compression uh, because of the other competitors which are willing to go lower in order to get some, some sales. So this company is down uh, about 70% in the last 12 months in terms of its stock price. Uh, so, so again, puke, total puke show. Uh, if we look at Tattooed Chef, uh, it, it was a real darling. It, it actually uh, went public via a SPAC. Um, they really built their business on what we call club channel, like uh, Costco and Sam's Club and things like that. Um, they, they managed to ramp some good revenue numbers, uh, get a good SPAC deal. And um, anyways, that company is down about 54% over the last 12 months. So puke show. Uh, so why would we bother talking to you about this if it's uh, such a pukey, disgusting, terrible tra tra train wreck? Total disaster. Well, we think that there's some great timing. We think that the, the fear of supply chain disruption, inflation, energy costs, food shortages has mad to, led to a mass exit of food stocks. We think that valuations are starting to look attractive. We think that the EV um, enterprise value sales multiple and valuations have been heavily compressed and come back to earth. And we're starting to see a little bit more value out there. Uh, we also think that there's going to continue to be an active M&A environment. Uh, Mondelez, which is sort of best known for snacks and, and candy, in the last five years, I think they've done nine, nine or ten um, M&A transactions. Rather than them just going out and creating another brand as a conglomerate, um, they're going out and trying to buy customer loyalty. Um, and we think that that's going to continue. 
We also think that there is changing nutrition habits. Just because 100% of us haven't decided that we're going to go plant-based or vegan or, or drop a, a meat burger or don't eat steak anymore, there's still more and more incrementally more people that are, that are um, um, making plants and more natural and better for you on uh, nutritional choices uh, as a larger and larger percent of their diet. So we think that, you know, uh, we think that that's going to continue to grow. It's just not going to grow like the investment bankers want in a hockey stick overnight. So don't forget the old saying, be fearful when others are greedy and be greedy when others are fearful. We think we're in the latter to be greedy when others are fearful. So here's an idea for you. Here's one stock in the small cap universe. It's a company called Blender Bites. Uh, what do they do? Well, they've got pre-portioned pre uh, frozen uh, smoothie pucks. So if you want to, if you don't want to worry about all the things to put in your blender to have a healthy smoothie, they make an easy, um, easy grab uh, at the grocery store in the freezer section. They're pre-portioned pucks that have a whole bunch of unique ingredients. And uh, it's probably the easiest way in order to have a nutritious, tasty smoothie. This company was founded by Chelsea Hodge, who's got deep expertise in the CPG space. She had uh, sales roles, um, incrementally bigger sales roles with Vega, which was acquired. And she was also with Left Coast Naturals, which was a food manufacturer. He is a food manufacturer and distributor. They also are the owner and distributor of their own brand called Hippie Snacks, amongst a few others. Hippie Snacks is probably the be best well, well known. Uh, Chelsea also has a background in small cap investor relations. Uh, it's kind of a unique or rare combo to find. And we think it's sort of ideal for this, for this type of company, especially during this time when it's really important to put numbers on the board and be able to talk to investors and create a real sense of loyalty and community around a company. The company's also got what we think is a fairly good share structure, less than 40 million shares out. Uh, it's got a market cap of under $20 million, and it's, it seems to have an annualized run rate if you look at their last disclosed revenues um, in January on a monthly basis. We think it's on a run rate of about $6 million and we think it's going to grow. So in terms of a price to sales uh, number, uh, uh, really, uh, we don't think it's all that rich. We think, that there's, we think that there's definitely some upside in that market cap and consequently the share price first mover advantage in the product space there's only a couple of other companies that have kind of done that unless you want to just buy raw frozen fruit and vegetables and and uh, be able to sort of create create the smoothie yourself there's not a lot of others that have already blended it up frozen it into a puck and made it super uh, convenient uh, so it's got a first mover there's also it, it also has some additional products in the pipeline that hasn't commercialized yet to be able to expand out from that um, now that they've got the retailers on board, now that they've got some trust in the marketplace, they've got their brand out there, we think it's an excellent time for them to throw some other products into the mix, literally. Um, and, um, you know, it's got uh, now adoption. It's in over 800 um, individual total points of distribution uh, within Canada with top grocers like Loblaws and IGA and Safeway, Save-On, Sobeys, you name it in terms of the national ones, they got their product in there. They also went live with Costco in East Coast in Canada. I guess the test went quite well. They've now got a region of Costco um, and they've just entered the U.S. market. And the U.S. is really the name of the game. Canada is small, small population spread over a wide uh, geographical base. The U.S. is a 10x opportunity. They've just entered the market. They haven't really disclosed any revenues from, from that yet. We think that once they do, this company is going to be re-rated and quickly at that. So just a little bit about the product. Uh, as you can see here, they're on the, on the left side, they're frozen pucks. There's three of them there. You don't have three necessarily three at once, but they're pre-portioned. You throw one in a blender and basically it, it, it contains all of those ingredients that you see there. So it's not just a bunch of fruit. It's a, bu it's a bunch of ingredients. And what are they? Plant-based, organic, dairy-free, gluten-free, non-GMO, soy-free, no, no added sugar, peanut-free. Um, you know, they're... There are high quality ingredients that are already pre-portioned. So if you don't have a lot of time, but you want to make sure that good nutrition is part of your diet, then these guys have a product for you. So why don't we have a look at the stock? These guys went public just right, sort of at the end of the plant-based sort of hype in, in 2021. 
Um, they went public via, via a fairly promotional group. Uh, as you can see there, there was uh, a lot of volume uh, not too long after they started trading. A huge spike, what we call promo in, uh, in small cap land. Um, we see that it's sort of been trending down. Um, however, here of late, it's been picking up a little bit. I think um, uh, I think we're you know it's it's I think the word's starting to get out. I think that a lot of the promo shares that maybe weren't with long-term holders have changed hands into longer-term shareholders, and it's starting to pick up a little bit. Um, so we actually added it to our talk stocks virtual portfolio on March 23rd. Uh, we added it at a price of 46 cents. I believe it closed today at 65 cents. Uh, we're looking for it to, to break out above its 50-day um, uh, moving average. Um, that's going to be in the around the 73, 75 cent range. So we're looking for a sustained move that would break out over that. Um, and um, just a little bit of gen on January 31st, 2022, their latest financials that they disclosed based on that date, they, had, they still had 1.85 million cash in the bank. They didn't really raise a ton of money when they went public. Um, and they've got a monthly uh, cash burn rate of about of about two hundred and fifty thousand dollars from the rough calculations I did. So uh, Chelsea Blender Bites, if I if I got that wrong, that's just based upon a bit of a rough calculation. Um, they are going to need to raise some cash at some point. You know, like most companies, they say they're fine at this point, but I would imagine that uh, as they're getting sort of closer to a million and a half dollars, they're probably going to want to start figuring out how they can get some more cash into the treasury. That's a little bit of our, it's our biggest risk, but um, I, I think that uh, they're probably going to have to paint the tape a little bit and turn it on if they want to raise some, some money. And I think there might be a, a, an opportunity here. So if we have to follow the people, uh, which is what we like to do, we don't invest in stocks. We invest in people, the people running these companies. Um, there's a bit of, you know, if we can follow good people and they, and uh, they're ethical and they work hard and they're able to be, uh, uh, you know, win the popularity contest with a good number of shareholders. They typically do well. We think that Chelsea possesses this type of, uh, you know, exact type of background that you'd need for, for, uh, for the industry. Um, she's the founder. She founded in 2016. She's got a lot of domain experience in CPG. She's been, she's worked in the nitty gritty, dirty, uh, shystery sort of IR market uh, with a, within the small cap universe. So she's been able to develop a thick skin and, and also been able to develop some good friends that want to back her on, on what she's doing. Uh, so she's got a, that unique skill set, as I've mentioned, of small cap IR and CPG uh, sales, focused on the sales side. And at the end of the day, these companies aren't really valued upon their IP. They're valued on how much revenue they can do and what type of profitability. Uh, she's worked at, uh, in leading sales roles with Vega, which was sold in 2017. Uh, for 550 million, I was founded by Charles Chang, another um, a, a expert in the CPG space based out of Vancouver. So, with her being able to get some mentorship and spend some time there, that that company that was so successful, uh, it's great. She's also spent time with Left Coast Naturals, they're a manufacturer as well as a, a better for you uh, distributor. Uh, so, again, two great places for her to help learn the craft. Um, so she's all in on this. She founded it in 2016. She's raised capital from friends and family. She's taken it public. She's put her name on it. She is the CEO. So we think that um, she's going to be highly motivated to make this a success. Uh, and I did a little bit of checking around, made a few phone calls, and she seems to be well-liked by the street. She hasn't created any enemies. Everybody holds her in high regards. And uh, so that's always good to see because the more, as important as the quality of the company and what they're doing, uh, a founder has to, uh, be, you know, win the popularity contest. They have to be able to build community. They need to be popular. They need to have a lot of friends that want to invest in what they're doing and continue to be shareholders. We think she possesses that skill in spades. And um, I think she also understands that uh, the U.S. is really the big prize and not to waste too much time in Canada. They've now quickly been making a, a good focus into the U.S. market. Uh, we just haven't seen the evidence of, of some of that success yet in terms of any financials. They haven't been due to disclose anything since they've done that. So who knows? If they come up with some good stuff here, this stock could re-rate re -rate quickly. So how do we play this? 
while it's already public on the CSC, uh, as well as the Frankfurt under the uh, on the CSC, it's under Byte. Um, we added it to our talk stocks uh, virtual portfolio, as I said, on March 23rd at 46 cents. Now trading in the mid 60s, close today at 65, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, we're looking for a sustained breakout above 70. Uh, maybe it may sort of have to do some churn here, uh, but uh, we we're we're looking for that and. Uh, and we think that, that the company has the chance to do that on some, on some uh, good news. Um, they announced in February that they're now on the shelves um, in the Southwest division of, uh, of the world's leading club store chain. Uh, we would surmise that this is Costco. They probably weren't allowed to use Costco in their news release, but we think it's Costco. Uh, if you go to their social media, you can see on their Instagram, they talk a lot about Costco. If you uh, look up a Wikipedia on Costco, Costco happens to be the world's leading club store chain. So it's Costco. So we anticipate that there's going to be a ramp in sales, and that's how these stocks are valued. And if they do well in one region in Costco, so they, they were in Costco, Eastern Canada, now they've moved into the Southwest uh, region in the U.S. Um, if they're able to get other divisions or other regions of Costco, that's how Costco works. You do well in one, they expand from there. That could mean millions of dollars of revenue a year for this company and really make it a household name. So just a little bit about our Talk Stocks deal flow uh, sort of port virtual portfolio. You guys can actually go look at it anytime you want. Um, so some of the recent stocks that, uh, that we've, uh, be, uh, we've highlighted, you can see that um, I, I would say over the last two months, we're up about 7.2%. Not bad in a tough um, environment, and, and we really only kind of cover small cap stocks. So I would say that's not too bad. Um, obviously, Blender Bytes is doing as uh, is, is the most of that sort of performance. It's up about 40% or just over 40% since, uh, since we added it. But anyways, you guys can go and check that out anytime at, uh, at the uh, URL that's listed and see how we're doing. And uh, we'll be uh, coming out with a future video here to provide a bit further update on each of the names that we've uh, recently put in there uh, to, to let you know what's been going on and, and how, uh, how they're doing. Uh, thank you so much uh, for your time. That concludes today's episode. Uh, until next time, happy investing.